we're shy here. Andrew? Anthony, welcome to Singapore. How's it treating you and uh, what's it like being so good at what you do that you get sent around the world to do it? Uh, Singapore has actually been a lot of fun. Uh, the last, I don't know, the last few years, I've tried to do a better job of enjoying the places that I go. I think up to that point I was in a lot of hotel rooms and a lot of cool places. Um, you know, not that I'm looking at retirement right now, but I definitely have a lot fewer years left than I, than I, than I have behind me. So um, I'm trying to enjoy it. I've had, a, I've had a lot of fun. I've gone and checked out the city and, and kind of bounced around. It's been a lot of fun. You're on a tough run, but you've come back from dropping three before. Uh, what did you learn from that experience when you were down there before and you totally turned it around? Uh, I think this one's a little bit different position. Um, before, you know, when I was early, early on in my career, um, I think, and I think that's a point that gets missed. I, I do have a, a good chunk of losses, but a, a lot of them are, are very, very early in my career. And I just wasn't very fucking good back then. You know, I just, I just, uh, I was making it through a lot of those fights with just will and determination. And, and, and this is a little bit different. I, uh, I've been a bit inconsistent. Um, I think at times I show up and uh, I think it's clear I can beat anybody in the world. And sometimes I show up and I shit the bed. And, and so I've just really been working on my consistency. I think that that's really what it comes down to is my focus um, and, and just trying to bring the best, best product every time. I think as I've gotten older, I've had to adjust um, some of my training and, and my approaches and some of my uh, recovery stuff. So it's just a learning process, man. Ryan Spann put together a couple of really impressive victories and then uh, submitted in his last fight in the first round. Which Ryan Spann are you expecting here? You know, that's kind of Ryan Spann in a, in a nutshell, isn't it? You know, he's, he, he's fairly inconsistent himself. Um, it, it just, if you let Ryan do what he wants to do, it, you're going to get a phenomenal product out of him. He's just, it's the type of fighter that he is. He's, he's a He's a very good downhill fighter. You know, once he gets rolling, it's, it's tough to stop that. So, um, I don't know. I, I don't really care so much what, he, what, what he's bringing. I don't really have any expectations. I've, I've worked really, really hard on the things that I want to do, and, and I really haven't thought so much about Ryan, to be very honest with you. Next question, please, Ben Yeah. Anthony, so you seems like a, a reason why you keep fighting because of uh, you are a journey to this you know, journey, but uh, this point, um, are you fighting against uh, uh, you fought against the Grover in the grappling match, mm -hmm. you know, right, uh, two months ago? So, what kind of uh, uh, this experience to give you any anything for as an MMA fighter? Yeah, you know, I, the the whole reason I'm still here and still on this journey is is the title, the. The second that I think that I can't win it, or, or maybe that's too far out of reach, then I'll be done doing this. Um, the the Glover thing was was more for a way. It was more a way for me to stay in shape and and, and have something to work towards. Um, just with everything I have going on with my family and, and, and all the other things that I have going on um, outside of the octagon, sometimes I do tend to get a little bit distracted. Um, so the, the taking the Glover thing was just a way for me to have fun, stress-free competition. You know, it was it's not very stressful doing jujitsu. I want to win. Though. I'm a competitor, so I don't I don't like losing. Um, so I I just wanted to, uh, a reason to to have a goal. I guess I needed something to to continue to to walk forward or walk walk towards every day. Um, and, and I think that really helped me, you know, because I didn't really have a training camp. I fought, I took a little bit of time off, got right into the training for the Glover thing, and then transferred right into getting ready for this fight. So I didn't really have much of a break, uh, which, I, which was really nice. It was, it was nice to not have to get into shape. I was just already in shape. Thank you so much. Thank you. You have a nice history with Glover and, and some pretty historic moments. Uh, how much would it intrigue you to face Alex Pereira? Because in terms of what you, your goal, he's perfectly placed, and it would be intriguing maybe to fight, uh, you know, Glover's student friend, training partner there. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be a lot of fun. I, I, I like that fight. I like 
what Alex has brought to the division. I have a lot of respect for him and his game. Um, and, and I just think it'd be a really fun fight. I think it would, it would, I think it would bring a little bit of intrigue to the fight just because of Glover and I's history. Um, anything I can do to get a win over Glover, uh, I would absolutely do as much as I like that guy. And, and after the grappling thing, you know, him and I and his wife and mine sat and, and had some beers and, and talked about, you know, potential matchups with me and Alex. And, and, you know, it is what it is. It's all business. And um, we're all martial artists and competitors. It's nothing personal at, at times, obviously, especially, you know, given the history of this fight, things do get personal at times. But between Glover and I and his team, it's, it's nothing but love. You've been flourishing on the analytical side. What was your take out from the, uh, the Jan fight with Alex? Uh, well, it was a really close fight. Um, you know, I think probably 50% of the people, you know, had Alex, and I think the other half probably had uh, Jan. Um, I thought that Alex looked pretty good. Uh, I, to be fair, I thought Jan looked pretty good as well. He, he was able to, to, to do a lot of things that Jan Blahovich typically does to be successful. I think that Alex had a, a little bit of an eye-opening moment, though, at 205. He's not the large, scary monster that he was at middleweight. He's a fairly normal dude. Um, now, because he's so so technical and, and, and has such an incredible striking game, he's always going to be special. But in terms of just his size and power, he doesn't stand out uh, amongst all of the 205ers. And I don't think that... Alex Pereira is more powerful and explosive than an Alexander Rakic. Um, he, he's not going to be stronger than a guy like Ankaliyev or, you know what I mean? Like, these dudes are big, powerful, hard-hitting dudes, every single one of them. So, um, it, because he's such a good striker, he's, gonna still, he's still going to be special. But it's not going to be just his power and, and his strength that's going to that push him over the top anymore. But I, I thought it looked good. I, I thought that his conditioning looked really good, especially at altitude in Utah. Um, I think we've seen Jan Blahovic had a really tough time with that after the first round of grappling heavy. He looked really gassed after the first. Um, his takedown defense was improved. It, he looked good even when he was taken down. He had his back taken. He, he fought well from the bottom, which makes a lot of sense because he does spend a lot of time with Glover, and, and you're not going to find a much better MMA grappler than that. So uh, it looked to me like he was improving. Um, Jan looked like the same Jan that we've seen time and time again, but you know, at 38 or 39 years old, I don't know how much more improving Jan has to do. Um, but with that said, I thought Jan looked really good as well. We've seen changes at 205 ever since uh, John Jones went up having held the belt for so long. The best man doesn't always hold the belt, but who in your mind is the best in this division right now? Wow, that's a great question. Um, Man, I don't know, because I think out of the entire top 10, everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. You know, uh, Jamal Hill was a, was a great, incredible fighter, but at times we've seen him taken down and, and had some issues in, this, in their grappling. Um, Striking-wise, he's really special. Um, it's nothing that he's ever been taught, I don't think. It, it, it's just things he's adapted over time. The things that he does are just very natural and instinctual and make him hard to deal with. Um, I think Jan Blahovic is very, very well. He's probably one of the most well-rounded guys, um, but you know, kind of at this point, he's he's having some issues, obviously, in the Ankalaya fight, and then as well in the uh, Pereira fight. But maybe just his gas and his output. Um, Pereira has a huge hole in his game when it comes to the grappling. I don't think that's a secret. Um, I think Alexander Rakic is probably right up there with one of the better guys. He only lost that he's taken has been due to injury against Jan Blahovic. He looked really good in that fight. I, I would love to see a fight with Alexander Rakic and uh, Yuri Prohaska. I think that those are probably the two guys at the, you know, at the top of the division in terms of skill. Um, but Alex is, uh, you know, Rakic's got some work to do to get a win um, after coming off that loss with injury. In other sports, we often see uh, youngsters explode, but in this game, it seems like experience is telling. You look at who holds the belt, but men and women, they're people in their mid-30s, right? Um, you faced most people in the top of this division, so how important is your experience going to be in achieving your goal? I think it's really important. It, it, you don't know what you don't know, right? So I think that that's what some of the younger fighters run into is, is it's a lot of the unknown, and they don't really know what they're getting themselves into at times. And, and even in this, you know, I've lost two in a row. 
um, it, I've been there before, you know what I mean? It's not the end of the world. It sucks, I hate losing, it's the worst thing in the world to me, but it's, I, I know how to come back from it, and I, and I think that that experience just in itself, and, and just being at bad spots, I've been in, there's not a position in the octagon that you can put me in, or, or a circumstance, or whatever, that I haven't seen before, um, and, and, and I would be comfortable there. So I, I think that helps a lot, I, and I think that even in this matchup with Ryan Spann, I think that that's the, that's the difference. It, it's, it's not, it's my experience and my fight IQ. It, physically, Ryan Spann is, has an advantage over me everywhere. And he knows it and I know it and I told him about it the last time. He, he's bigger, stronger, faster. He's more explosive, he hits harder. He's, he's probably more conditioned just because of the, the miles. Um, he's gonna absorb damage better than I am probably. But like mentally, if you, it doesn't really matter if you can't put it all together, you know? It's, it's, it's all great to have a have a fucking Ferrari sitting there, but like if it just sits there, what do you, you know what I mean? It's not very fast. So, um, you know, I, 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 I think that, that is the difference with me and a lot of people. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have time for one more question? Does anyone have a question? All right. Thank you. Very Sweet. Much. Thank you, guys. Thank you.